If you're an animator on a tight budget, there's a good chance that you probably animated your film using a free program such as a Fire Alpaca or a Krita. Now, even though you've already created your film, it's very important to edit your film so that way it looks visually stunning to your audience. Now the thing is, if you're broke or you're strapped on cash, you probably might not be able to afford a professional, super high quality video editing program like an Adobe Premiere or a Sony Vegas. But guess what? In this video, I am going to show you a powerful free video editing software known as HitFilm Express. I personally like this program because number one, it's free, and number two, you can actually edit your animated films to look amazing. So if you want to learn how to do that, stay tuned for the entire video. Hey what's up, it's Ian from Ian Mago Pictures. On this channel we provide you with the best tips and tools that will help you to become a better animator. So if you're new here, consider subscribing to the channel. Now when it comes to using HitFilm Express, the first thing you gotta do is to download the program. Now I've included a link in the description. If you click on it, you'll be taken directly to the FX Home website that features the HitFilm Express program. So click the link below in the description. Now when you do, you'll get a screen that looks like this. Here you will see this guy who's yelling with a fake Captain America wannabe shield. But don't pay attention to that. Focus on this button right here that says download HitFilm Express. When you click on it, you'll notice right away that HitFilm will try to sell you some of their starter packs. Now these packs can be very nice and very convenient, especially if you start using the program and you want to speed up your editing workflow. However, this is the free edition, so you don't necessarily need these packs right now. So if you don't want to pay for these packs, all you got to do is to drag the smiley face all the way to the left. Once you do that, you will see the download button. I'll need you to click on it. Then you'll be required to fill in your information. It's important to fill in all the correct information, especially, especially when it comes to the email because they're going to send you the actual link to download the program to your email account. So make sure you give them the right email. Once you filled out everything, you'll click send me the express download. Now, once you filled out all your information, you'll need to head over to your email. HitFilm Express will send you an email in your inbox. So just check out your inbox, click on that email, and then scroll down to where you'll see the button that says get your express installer. You'll need to click on it. When you click the button, you'll see a page that says install instructions. One of the first steps is to make sure you uninstall any existing copy. So by any chance, if you have a HitFilm Express already downloaded in your program, you'll want to uninstall it. So that way you can install the updated version. Now, if you've never downloaded HitFilm Express before, you'll need to focus on step two. There are two options. If you're a Windows user, click the download window installer. If you're a Mac user, click the download Mac installer. When you click on the installer, it will pull up the actual installation file. Now, when you obviously agree to the license agreement, you will see three setups that you can choose from. I highly recommend that you choose the typical setup because it will have all the tools that you need in order to edit your animated film. So once you click install, you'll need to install the program to your computer. Then once you're done and you've installed everything, your HitFilm Express will look something like this. Now, if you take a look at it, it might seem very intimidating if you're new to this, but trust me, this is one of the easiest programs to master when it comes to video editing. And I'll show you how to use all of this stuff that you see later on in the tutorial. Now that we've downloaded the program, it's now time to export our animation. Now, if you take a look at my folder, you'll see I have two separate folders. One dedicated for the background artwork. The other one is dedicated for the image sequence. 
Now, I personally like to separate my animations into two program files, one for the background artwork and the other one for the image sequence because I want to export them separately as transparent PNG files. If for some reason you decided to merge them all together, it makes it very hard for you to edit it in HitFilm Express. But if you're able to separate them in the beginning and then import them into HitFilm Express, it will make it so much easier in order to edit your film. As we continue with this tutorial, you'll start to see this in action. Now, before we progress any further, I wanted to let you know if you don't have any animations that you've already created that you want to test out, I've personally included a project file in the description for you. If you click on that link, it'll take you directly to my blog article. Download the project file and you will have the completed image sequence and completed background assets that I'm going to be using in this demonstration. I highly recommend that you do it because you'll learn so much faster as you follow along. So take some time to download the project files. Now we're going to go to the folder that says background folder. We're going to click on it. And once I do that, you'll notice I have two folders also in here. This folder contains the actual Krita document that I'm going to open up. But this empty folder right here says background artwork PNG files. The reason why I created a folder beforehand is because I know that I'm going to have to export each object in my background painting and I have to dump it into one folder. And this is a folder I've designated for this tutorial. So in the future, whenever you're doing this, always create a background folder that you're going to contain all your assets in. So when you import them in HitFilm Express, it'll be very, very easy for you. So now that you've known about that, we're going to proceed to the actual file. So we're going to click this create a document. And once it loads up, you'll see that this is the background. Now to give you an idea, this is a background that is heavily inspired by Winnie the Pooh from the TV show. I've included his house. In there you'll see his honey pots because you know this bear is very addicted to eating lots and lots of honey. So it was appropriate for me to put it in my illustration. Now if you take a look at each object, I've decided to place it in its own individual layer. The reason why I want to do this is because I will have to export each object in its own transparent PNG file. So let's just say I wanted to remove these pots, this table, all of these things in the front right here. So I'm left with just the background and the bottom of the ground. The way I can do that is by turning off the other layers that I don't need. Now to turn off a layer in Krita, you just simply need to click the eye icon, which is always towards the left side of each layer. So I'm going to do that right now. So I'm taking it out, I'm doing it. And then now we have the background that we want. We have the, the bottom of the ground and just this tree house like background. Now let's just say I wanted to export this image only. So to export this image, you're going to go to file, then click export. When the dialog pops up, you can name it the file, whatever you'd like it to be. But the most important thing is to make sure that you save the type to a PNG image. So once you've done that, you're going to click save. Then you're going to click save one more time. And now we're going to take a look at the actual background image that we've saved to that empty folder that I had previously. So that's the image right there. Now let's head back to the created document and try to export the other objects in this background painting. So for this background painting, we're going to export a few images. We're going to export this pot right here, these pots right there, and then this clock right here. 
For the table and the chair, don't worry about that for now. I actually had to save it in my image sequence. So we don't have to worry about this for right now. Now let's just say you wanted to isolate, let's say the honey pot. We have to turn off all the other layers. So once we've done that, we're gonna most likely get an image that looks very similar to this. Once you've isolated the object, you will most likely see a white background. If you run into this problem, it's very easy to solve. All you need to do is to scroll down to the bottom layer and then uncheck that white background. If you do it correctly, you will have a transparent background that looks like this. Notice that this transparent background has a checkered background look. That's what you have to look for in order to make sure that you're exporting your images on a transparent PNG file. Just like before, we're gonna save the object as a transparent PNG file. We're gonna repeat the same process for the other objects that I want to export. So now that I've exported everything, let's go and take a look at the exported images. That's the pot, that's the actual background. Over here we have the clock. And then finally, over here, we have the green pot that's on the right side of the background. Now we have completed exporting all the background assets for this animation. Now it's time to actually export the real animation. So let's take a look at it. Now, just like how we exported the background assets, we need to export the image sequence. So we're gonna click on the image sequence folder and you will see I have a folder that has your original file while the empty folder that says image sequence PNG files is empty for a very good reason. You see, whenever you animate any animation, you will most likely have hundreds of images that will need to be exported. So it's very advisable to make sure you create a folder beforehand before we start the exporting process. With that said, let's open up the original file. Now, if you're opening up your file, you will most likely see it in this perspective, which is known as the Krita default workspace. Now, if you want to export your animation, you're gonna first have to change your workspace from the default view to the animation workspace view. Now, in order to change the workspace, you're gonna to have to click Window, scroll down to Workspace, and then click Animation. When you click on this workspace, you will see two important animation tools. The first one right here, which is the timeline, is very important because that's where you'll be able to scroll through all the animations that you've completed. And then right over here is the animation playback. Tool. So with this tool, it's nice because you can be able to adjust the frame rate to whatever you'd like. Typically, whenever I animate, I always animate at 24 frames per second because it gives me the flexibility to animate on ones, which simply means that every drawing is unique, or on twos, which simply means that I'm drawing a frame twice and I'm repeating it two times. This gives you more greater flexibility whenever you have to complete an animation where you don't want to necessarily keep drawing every single frame, you can use twos depending on what animation you're creating. Now that we have the animation set ready to go, it's simply a simple animation of Winnie the Pooh dipping his hand into the honey, eating it, and then repeating the same process over and over and over again. It's supposed to loop whenever I finish the exporting the animation. Now it's time for me to export this animation. To do this, I'm gonna to go to File, then I'm gonna click Render Animation. Now Creator will give you the option to render it as an image sequence, a video, or both. I highly recommend that you render it as an image sequence because we can easily turn it into a video whenever we import it into HitFilm Express. Then as we scroll down, you'll see the file location. You can always click on that folder 
and make sure you save it to the folder that you want to dump all your image sequences in. So when it comes time to importing it into HitFilm Express, it'll be very easy and it won't be a headache. So once you've selected your folder, you can now click OK. Then we're going to wait for Krita to export all the images. Once it has completed, we're going to take a look at the folder that has all of those image sequences. So we're going to open it up and you'll see a bunch of images in this program. For this animation, it took about 426 drawings in order to get it done. Now that's a lot of drawings. Imagine if you actually tried to save that on your desktop, it would be a nightmare. So definitely always, always, always create a folder beforehand before you export an image sequence. So now that I have the animation already rendered out as a transparent PNG files and the background assets also as transparent PNG files, it is now time to import them into HitFilm Express. Now, when it comes to importing your assets into HitFilm Express, you first need to open up the HitFilm program. So when you open it up, you'll see a screen that looks like this. We're going to click New. Then we're going to set the size to be 1920 by 1080. And we're going to change the frame rate to 24 frames per second because I created my animation at 24 frames per second. So I want everything to match. Now, this is the editing workspace. This is usually the best workspace to deal with whenever you're importing any asset into HitFilm Express. So if your workspace does not look like this, you'll need to change it to the editing workspace. You'll need to go to Window, click Workspaces, then scroll down and click Editing. And when you do, your workspace will look just like this. Now, once you have this workspace, we obviously need to import all the assets that we created for our animation. We're going to go to import, then we're going to import the image sequence. So click the first frame and then hold shift. While holding shift, scroll all the way down and click the last frame. If you do this correctly, all the frames will be highlighted. And then if it's highlighted, you're going to click open. And you will see this message saying, hey, I think you want to import an image sequence. In this scenario, we definitely do. So you want to click import image sequences. Click that button. And this is the actual animation. We're going to preview it so you can kind of get an idea of how it looks. Next is to import the background assets. So we're going to click import again. Then we're going to go to where we have our background assets. Click the first image, hold shift, and then click the last image. If you do it correctly, it will highlight everything. And then you'll just simply press the open button. Now we have all the assets that we need in order to start editing our animated film. Now to give you a basic good foundation in learning how to use HitFilm Express. I'm just going to go over the basic editing tools you're going to be using in this program. So one tool that you're going to be using quite a lot in HitFilm Express is known as the trimmer window. It's basically this window right here. When I press the play button, you'll see that Winnie the Pooh is eating the honey from the honey pot. As I'm playing the video, the blue area represents what will be showcased if I drag this video into the timeline. So if I were to drag this video right now, the entire 17 seconds will be on the timeline. But let's just say I didn't want to do that. I wanted to maybe adjust the beginning and end of this video. Well, the way to do it is by using these two buttons right here. The button on the left is the set in point. This means that the set in point represents the beginning of the video or more specifically where you want to start the video. So instead of starting it at like 0.000 seconds, 
Let's just say I wanted to start a little bit past that. The way I can adjust that time is by first dragging this circle all the way to the left, kind of right up to here. Then I'm going to click in the set in point and pay attention to what happens on the screen. If you take a look at the left side of the circle, you'll notice that it's black. While if we take a look towards the right side of the circle, you'll notice that everything after that is blue. This means that we've successfully adjusted the set in point. So if we were to drag this into the timeline, it would start at this stage right here with Winnie the Pooh at least having the hand in his mouth, which is filled with honey. Now for the demonstration of this video, we're going to go and adjust the ending as well. So instead of it ending at like around 17 seconds, we're just going to move it, the circle all the way to here. But this time, I'm going to click the set out button. And this blue area represents what will be in the timeline once I drag this video into this timeline. And to test that out, we're going to finally drag it into the timeline. You will get this message that says this. The edited sequence noticed that your video clip doesn't match the project settings. And that is true. The project settings were set at 1920 by 1080. However, this animation was set at 2000 by 1920 pixels. My original intention when I was creating this was trying to create a video that would fit for Instagram. That's why you see it's a little bit different from my project settings. But don't worry, this is very simple. All you got to do is click no. And the reason why you can click no with confidence is that you have the ability to adjust it to your preferences without worrying about the animation looking weird or wonky. Now that we have the video in the timeline, Let's preview what the video now looks like. As you can see, you'll notice that the video maintains the same set in and set out points that we created in the trimmer viewer. Now, one of the major things that you're going to use is the zooming in button in the timeline. For example, in this scenario, the clip is kind of small to edit. If you wanted to make the clip bigger, that means you will need to zoom in the timeline. Now, if you take a look at the bottom left corner of the timeline, you will see these two icons, a small mountain and a big mountain. If we were to drag the small circle towards the big mountain, it will make the clip a whole lot larger, which makes it easier for editing. So let's test it out right now. And there we go. That's going to be a very helpful tool. Now the next thing is this. We want to start using some of the tools that are right over here. And in order to make it easier for you, I'd like you to delete the clip that you have right now in your timeline. So you're going to press the clip, then press the delete button on your computer. After doing this, we're going to change the set in and set out points back to the original position. So I'm going to take this little circle, move it all the way to the left side, press the set in button. And then I'm going to take the same circle, move it all the way to the right side and press in the set out button. If I do it correctly, it will maintain the original 17 second time duration. Once I've done that, I'm going to drag it into the timeline and you will get the same message again. This time, make sure you just click no. And now we're going to start using the editing tools. The first thing I want to use is the selection timeline. To use this tool effectively, we're going to have to copy and paste this clip two more times. To do it, you got to select the clip, press Ctrl C, then move the player head a little bit away from the original clip. So there's a little bit of a gap in space and then press Ctrl V. You're going to repeat the same process again. Control C, move the player head towards the right side, make sure there's a gap of space, then press Control V. If you do that correctly, you should have three clips that you can use. Now, whenever it comes to using the selection tool, which is this one right here, 
you click on the clip that you want to move and then you can just click and drag it to your desired position. So for example, this one, I'm moving it towards the right side and doing the same thing for this one. I just want to demonstrate how easy it is to use this tool. So that's pretty much the selection tool. The next tool looks like a hand icon. It's a way you can be able to basically drag the timeline with like a hand. So I'm going to click it. I'm going to drag it towards the right side. I'm going to drag it towards the left side. That's one option. Another way to basically scroll through the timeline is to also use the space bar as well, which is at the bottom corner of the timeline. Whichever works for you is fine. I just wanted to give you just an extra option that you can use. The next tool that you'll use frequently is known as the slice tool. The way it works is you'll need to first click the razor icon. Then you're going to move the player head to the area where you want to split the clip. So we're going to move it right about here. And with the icon selected, if I place it right next to the actual player head, the player head line will turn red, just like this. After it turns red, you'll see that it'll be able to split the clip. And with the selection tool, you can be able to drag the selected clip to your desired position. That covers the selection, the hand tool, and the slice tool. The next tools that you'll see, which is this one, this one, this one, and that one, those are a little bit complicated, and I don't want to talk about it in this tutorial. If you really, really, really want to learn how to use those tools, I highly recommend you check out the HitFilm Express Masterclass. They go deep into learning how to use those tools. But in my honest opinion, if you're starting off, you don't necessarily need those tools right away. You want to do that once you really are familiarized with the HitFilm Express program. There is one other tool though, that I definitely think you can use right now is known as the rate stretch tool. The benefit of using this tool is that you can be able to speed up or slow down your animations. So let's check out how this tool works. You want to select a clip that you'd like. Let's just say I want this clip. I'm going to click towards right here at the end of the clip and stretch it out. After stretching out the clip, that basically will slow down the speed of the animation. So if I were to press play in the viewer window, which is this one right here, you'll notice how slow the animation has become when you compare it to the original video. This is good whenever if you want to maybe create a slow motion shot in your animation. Now, if we were to decide to move the button towards the left side, it will make the clip smaller thus increasing the speed of the animation. To test it out, we're going to press play, and you'll see, bam, it was very quick. Now that you've learned how to use the basic editor tools in HitFilm Express, it's now time to upgrade to learning how to use the composite workspace. Now, the composite workspace is different from the editor workspace. In the editor workspace, such as the one we have right now, the main purpose is to simply arrange the clips that need to be used in your video. Although you can perform some basic edits in this window, it's not the best place to add advanced effects such as color grading or camera movement. This is where you want to upgrade to using a composite shot. The great thing about a composite shot is you can add multiple layers of effects to a video such as camera movement, color grading, and so much more. After you've finished performing all your edits, you can simply drag your composite shot to your editor timeline. And the good thing about it is it'll contain all the effects that you created in the composite shot. It makes it more easier to organize how each clip looks. We're gonna talk about it a little bit more as we progress in the tutorial. I just wanted to give you that clear understanding that there is a difference between working from an editor workspace and from a composite workspace. Now that you know the benefits of using both workspaces, it's now time to learn how to use 
the composite workspace. Since we have now been talking about the composite shot, let's actually create one. So we're going to start off by deleting all three clips. Now the easiest way to do it is to simply highlight all three clips and then press delete. After doing this, you're going to click the composite shot. Then you want to make sure you set your settings to 1920 by 1080 and make sure that the frame rate is at 24 frames per second. Now you can be able to work in this workspace, which is the editor workspace, but I've personally learned that it's much, much better to work in the composite workspace because it will make it much easier to add effects to each of the assets that you're going to be using in your animated film. Now to switch the workspace from the editor workspace to the composite workspace, you want to go and click window, click workspaces, and then scroll down until you see compositing. Now if you do it, your screen will look like this. It's important to head over back to the media bin, which is right here, in order to take a look at the assets that you have in your animated film. Now as soon as you do this, your workspace should look kind of like this. The goal with working in a composite shot is to drag the assets that you have in your media bin over to this location. For each asset you drag to this area, it will form in its own layer. We'll start off with the most important asset, which is the Winnie the Pooh animation sequence. We're going to drag it over. And as soon as I drag it over here, it will form its own layer. Now you may have noticed that the layer is a little bit too big. You can always use the resize button over here in order to resize the image to your preferences. So I'm going to resize it right now. And once I like the size that it's at, I immediately need to lock the layer. And the reason why I'm putting a huge emphasis on locking the layer is because when you're working in an animated film, you're going to have multiple, multiple layers to work with. If you don't lock your layers properly, you could easily find yourself resizing a layer that you don't want to resize. So to skip that frustration of having to go back and keep fixing errors, you simply need to resize the layer to what you want, lock it before you add another layer into this composite shot. Since I'm happy with this shot, I'm going to lock it and I'm going to proceed to dragging this layer right here to the composite shot. I'm going to resize it as well and then I'm going to lock it. Once I've locked it, I'm going to repeat the same exact process for the remaining assets in this scene. Since I want to take a look at what I've done so far, I'll need to zoom out of this scene. Now in HitFilm Express, you can use this feature right here, this magnifying glass, in order to zoom in or to zoom out of a scene. Since I want to zoom out, I'm going to click this area right here, and then I'm going to scroll down to where it says 25%. Once I click that, I'll be able to see everything in my scene. Now that the scene has been set, it's time to master learning how to animate the camera in HitFilm Express. To make it simple and as easy as possible, we're going to first learn how to move one of these objects around using the controls tools in HitFilm Express. I choose to move the image sequence. So with every other layer locked, I'm just going to unlock the image sequence. As soon as I do this, I'm going to click the Controls tab. Now the Controls tab is going to be very important whenever you're animating any kind of keyframe. To put it simply, if I wanted one of my objects to move from right to left, you do it over here. If I wanted to move one of my objects up or down, you do it over here. If I wanted to make an object bigger or smaller, you do it over here. The Controls tab has been purposely designed to help you animate any object that you have in your animated film. Now, for this starting example, I want to move 
Winnie the Pooh from left to right. Now this is how you get it done. You will first need to click this button right here known as the display timeline. This gives you a visual representation of all the keyframes that you've added to your animated film. It makes it easier for you to see what you need to adjust as you're working on your composite shot. And I want to now take this character and move him towards the left side. After I've done that, you can obviously tell that the character is on this side. Even though he does not appear on the scene, you can tell that he's at this location because of this blue box right here. We want to now set this as the starting point. So I'm going to click position. Position basically refers to moving an object either from left to right, right to left, or diagonally. That's basically what the position function can do for your animation. Since I want to move my character from left to right, I'll need to head over to the position tab. As soon as I'm in the position tab, I will need to click the toggle keyframe. This will tell HitFilm Express that it needs to form the first keyframe at this position. So I'm gonna click on it. Then I'm gonna take the player head and move it a little bit towards the right side. Moving it to the right side is simply saying that I want the animation to start from zero seconds to about right here at I believe like four seconds. So we just move it to that location. Once you've done that, then you need to go to the actual object and physically drag it from the left side towards the right side of the screen. Now, after I've moved Winnie the Pooh from left to right, a few things have happened that you may have noticed. The first thing is that you'll see these small white dots right over here. That's an indication that there's been some sort of animation happening in this scene. And if we take a look at over here, it formed a new keyframe once we set Winnie the Pooh to this location. So we want to take a look at this. We'll start to drag the player head to see the animation. So let's take it right here. As I go and scrub through, you can obviously see there's some sort of movement going on. Now to take a closer look at the actual animation, we're going to head over to the viewer window and we're going to press the play button. And as I press play, you will see that Winnie the Pooh is being moved from the left side of the screen towards the right side of the screen. You may have noticed that the animation is kind of slow. So to speed it up a little bit, I need to reduce the spacing between both keyframes. To do it, you're going to take the second keyframe and you're going to drag it towards the left side. By doing this, when I press play again, you will notice that the speed will be much, much faster. So I'm going to reduce it down towards the left side and then press play to see the result. Now after playing it, you'll see that it's much, much faster than the original animation that we just did right before this one. So we're going to try doing this again, but we're going to reverse the direction. So I'm going to click this keyframe right here. I'm going to right click and press reset. When I do this, it'll clear out all the keyframes that I've created in this position tab. I'm going to start fresh and then by starting it fresh, I want to position the actual object from the right side because I want to move it from right to left. So I'm going to move Winnie the Pooh towards the right side. Once I'm happy with that position, I'm going to click the position tab. Then I'm going to click toggle keyframe. That will set the first keyframe for this animation. And just like before, I'm going to move the player head so there's going to be a little bit of distance between the first keyframe and what will be the second keyframe. I'm going to set it right over here. And then I'm going to move the character towards the left side of the screen. 
Okay, to see what we've done so far, I want to scrub through it, kind of to get the idea that there's some sort of motion going on. And then I always like to double check it by pressing play in the viewer window. And there you go. That's the animation of Winnie the Pooh moving from the right side to the left side. Now that we've gotten a little bit of practice, we want to clear everything by resetting what we've done so far. Now we're going to move Winnie the Pooh diagonally. So once we've reset everything, we're going to start Winnie the Pooh from right here, but I'm going to move him towards the top left corner of the screen. So once I've started him right here, I'm going to press toggle keyframe. Then I'm going to move the play ahead a little bit. Now I've moved the character towards the left side, top left side of the screen. So if I was to press play, check out what the animation will look like. And that's basically how you use the position function in the controls tab. The next function that you need to master is the scale function. This function is going to be very helpful for you because whenever it comes to zooming in or zooming out of a scene, you're going to be using the scale function. So in this tutorial, I want to show you a quick demo of how you can use this in a practical way. Okay. So we need to clear out everything that we created in the position tab. So you're just going to click reset. Then we're going to click the scale function. Now the goal for the scale function in this scenario is to zoom in towards the pool animated image sequence. So when we're doing it, we'll start off by clicking the scale tab, then clicking toggle keyframe. Just like before, we're going to move the playhead towards the right side. So there's a little bit of distance between the keyframes. Now, when it comes to scaling, you do have two options. Option one, you can scale using the viewer window resize tool, which is this arrow right here in order to scale your object. That works perfectly. But it can be kind of a hassle whenever you're having to scale and try to position things the right way. What I prefer to do whenever it comes to scaling, specifically to scaling, is to just change the numerical figures right over here on in the controls tab. I want to click right here. And then I want to adjust the 72.6 to a 92.6. This will obviously make it bigger. As I soon as I change that figure, you'll see that it'll automatically create a new keyframe. Now we're going to scrub through this to see what we've done so far. As I scrub through the display timeline, you'll see that Winnie the Pooh becomes much bigger, or it feels like we're zooming in towards the character, which is what we wanted. Now that we've done that animation, we're going to reverse the order. Now we're going to zoom out. So we're going to go to where we have scale, and then we'll need to reset what we've done so far. After resetting what we've done, I'm going to move the playhead back to zero, and then I will go and click toggle keyframe. We'll start it off at 100%. So once we've set it that way, we're going to click toggle keyframe. Then we're going to move the playhead a little bit towards the right and then set it to 72.6. As soon as I do this, it'll create a new keyframe. We're going to scrub to make sure that we're zooming out of the image sequence. And now that I'm testing it, it looks pretty good. But I always like to test it by pressing play in the viewer window. Now that the animation has been complete, it's now time to step up our game. I've shown you how to use the position function and the scale function. Now that you have the fundamental ability of knowing how to use these two functions, we're going to use them in order to mimic camera motions. So for the first motion, I want to pan the scene from left 
to write. Now this is how I usually get the job done. I first have to decide which one of these layers is going to be my parent layer. And here's the concept behind that. Whichever is the parent layer, let's just assume it's moving from left to right. If I connect all the other layers to that parent, it'll follow the same direction. This is very helpful because it can make it a little bit faster for me to finish some basic camera movements without having to go to each layer and adjust the motion so it matches all the time. I'm going to show you how to get it done in a very simple and easy way. Now out of all the layers here, I've decided to choose the background layer, the one that has the tree background because I have enough space to use in order to create this motion that I'd like. So I'll take a look at it. Then I've decided I'll need to resize it and make it a little bit bigger so I can be able to mimic that camera motion of the camera moving from left to right. Once I've resized it to the size I would like it to be, I'm going to move the image so you can be able to see this honeypot. Right now, you can see the words U-N-N-Y, and that's going to be important because that will be the first keyframe that I want to set for this motion. Then, since we're going to be panning from left to right, we're going to use the position function. So we're going to click on the position function, then we're going to head over here to the toggle keyframe. Now the next thing that we need to do is to obviously move the player head a little bit so there is enough room between the two keyframes that will be in this scene. Then I'm going to head over to the actual object and move it. And you will find the best tool to use is this arrow in the viewer tab. So we'll take a look at this and then we're going to move this image. And notice what happens to the word in the honey pot. Before you could see U N N Y, but now that we've moved it over towards the right side, you're starting to see, you're only seeing N N Y, which is a visual idea for you guys to be able to quickly see that I'm gonna be intending to pan this camera from left to right. I've set the next keyframe, and now if we scrub through what we've done, you'll see the motion. Now we've set that as the parent layer. And the reason why that's going to be the parent layer is because I want to connect all the other layers to that motion. So you can tell right here the official creative background, we're going to treat that as a parent layer. But for all the other options, you'll notice currently it says none. Well, that's about to change right now. I want you to go to each layer and switch it from what it says none and change it to the Krita background layer. In my case, the Krita background layer is going to be number five. It might vary depending on how you import it into your composite shot, but the principle is still the same. You want to connect it to the parent layer. So I'm going to change all the remaining layers and connect it to layer 5. Now that we've done that, we're going to preview what we've done so far and you'll see that everything is going to move from left to right. I'm going to press play in the view window. And there we go. Now that I was able to connect everything to that one layer, I was able to easily do a basic camera move where all the objects are moving in the same direction at the same speed. This is perfect if you want to do a simple basic camera movement that doesn't require something a little bit complicated known as parallaxing. If you guys want to learn how to do some parallaxing effects, let me know. I can be able to create a tutorial for you on that. Now the next camera motion that we're going to do is a zoom in. We're going to zoom in towards Winnie the Pooh eating the honey from the honey pot. Now to zoom in, we're obviously going to be using the scale function. So we're going to head over here and we're going to take a look at our scale. 
Now our scale is currently set to 82%. Since it's set to that position, I kind of like it the way it is. I'm going to go and just click the toggle keyframe. Then I'm going to move the player head a little bit. So that's going to be some distance between the two keyframes. And then I'm going to change the scale to 88%. You'll notice that right now it says 90, but I did adjust it back to 88%. Now that I've made that adjustment, let's press play to see the result. As I'm pressing play, you can clearly see that the camera is zooming in towards the character. This pretty much wraps up the camera motions that we're going to be doing for this lesson. Now the next step is to learn how to color grade this animation. I'm going to show you how to do it in the next lesson. Now when it comes to color grading, the purpose behind the color grading is to affect the visual mood that you want your audience to experience. For example, if you watch a movie kind of like Curious George, if you take a look at that film, you'll notice it's very vibrant. The colors that they chose, the color gradient that they chose was intended to be very saturated in order to give you that pleasant feeling of, wow, this is a very uplifting film. However, in the same way, you can also use color grading in order to show sorrowful moments. For example, if you take a look at like a war film, you'll notice that the colors that they use is more desaturated because it has almost no life in it in order to kind of convey the feeling of sadness and grief. That's the advantage of using color grading in order to enhance your storytelling. Now for this video, I'm going to be talking about the two color grading features that I personally use in HitFilm Express. The first effect that I'm going to talk about is known as color balance. Now in order to apply this effect to this animation, we're going to start off by adding a new layer known as a grade layer. So let me show you how to get it done. So we're going to go over here where it says new layer. When you click on it, you'll get several options to choose from. I'd like you to choose grade. Now what you've just created is a grade layer. It will allow you to add some color effects, color grading effects to your animation with ease. Now, to begin the process, we're going to go to where we have effects and I'm going to type in the first effect, which is color balance. As soon as it appears on the screen, I would like you to drag it over to this location right here. And right away, we're going to talk about the three elements that it shows shadows, midtones, highlights. Now, any image that you see, whether it's my background painting, or an image in real life, there will be a portion of that image that will be in the shadow section, mid tone section, and highlight section. We're going to start off with the shadows. As soon as you click this button right here for the shadows, you'll see that we have the RGB spectrum. R representing the red. G representing the green and blue, B representing the blue. Now to make it much easier for you to notice which areas of this image are the shadow areas, I'm going to purposely slide the red and blue balance buttons all the way to the left. If you take a look at the image right now in the viewer window, you'll notice that the shadow areas are highlighted by the green color. This shows you that this background painting has shadows, which means it's pretty nice because it gives you a more realistic look. Now, obviously, I would never color grade in this manner because it looks horrible. So I'm going to reset everything and then I'm going to tweak it a little bit. So to reset what we've done so far, I'm going to click this area right here to where it says the red balance. I'm going to click reset then go to where it says the blue. Same thing, reset. Now we're back to the normal settings. But we're going to adjust it so that way the red and blue are more prominent than the green aspect of this image. So for the green button, I'm going to move it more towards the left. And then that's really it. I guess I didn't push the red or blue any further. I just felt 
based, I guess, based on my gut feeling that I didn't want to push it too much. So we move on to the midtones. Same thing to make it easier for you guys to notice where the midtones are. I'm going to move the red and blue buttons all the way to the left. So the mid-tone areas are pointed right here, 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 here. Now for that, obviously I want to reset everything and adjust it to what I really want the mid-tones to look like. In this case, for the mid-tones, I just slightly reduced the green balance button towards the left side. And finally, we have our highlights. I want to point those out to you. We're going to repeat the same procedure. And you'll notice that the areas that are highlighted are Pooh's skin and the top of the table. I just want to reset that back to normal. And this is the option that I chose. Now, when it comes to color grading, it's pretty subjective to the person who's grading the film. There isn't like a right or wrong answer to it. There's only guidelines. Use this towards whatever preference you would like. I just wanted to give you at least a good foundation of how to use the color balance to help enhance your film. Now, since this can be type consuming, it's very good to create a preset so you can save time. Now, to create a preset for what you've done so far, you'll need to click this button right here. Then you're going to right click and click Create Preset. Then you will need to name your preset and click save. Now in the future, if you want to be able to access this preset button, you're just gonna go type in presets, and then you'll see the tutorial example, which will be the preset that you've created. Okay, so we've done that. The next effect is going to be the vignette effect. So I'm gonna just type it in. It'll appear on my screen, and then I'm going to drag it to the Effects tab. Now, the purpose of this effect is to add a little bit of gradient to my animated scene. In my opinion, it looks gives it a more cinematic look, because when I used to watch films like Brother Bear or Treasure Planet, maybe it was just me, but I've always noticed that there was some sort of gradient towards the bottom that was a little bit darker than if you looked at the middle of the scene but again that's just my biased opinion just something you can be used in order to enhance your film so we're here in the vignette area we're going to start off by focusing on the width i want to purposely move it all the way to the left so you can kind of see what it looks like if i move it all the way to the left you'll see that it starts to form a circle on the left and right side of the image now obviously this is a little bit of extreme option so I'm going to move the button towards the right side because I really don't want to affect any gradient on the left or right. I really want to focus on the height making sure there's a little bit of gradient at the top and bottom of my scene. So for demo purposes I'm going to move it all the way to the left so you can kind of see how it affects the image and now I'm going to move it towards the right in order to make sure it's not taking up the entire image. If you take a look at the bottom, you'll notice it's significantly darker than before. And because of that, I want to reduce the strength just a little bit so it's not too strong. And that's pretty much it in terms of using the vignette effect. It's pretty light. I never really want to push it too much. It's just something that makes the film look a little bit better. Now, if I'm happy with this color grading effect, I want to save it as a preset. I'm going to right click here. Then I'm going to press Create Preset. And I'm going to label it as well and click Save. Now I want to take a look at how the effects that I've created affected the overall image. I'm going to start off with the color balance. So this is the way the image used to look like before. And now this is the way the image looks after we did the color balance. Same thing for the big net. This is the way it looks before. And this is the way it looks after. Now that we've completed editing our composite shot, it's now time to make a few more adjustments before we can 
import it into our editor timeline. Now the first adjustment that I want to do is I want to adjust the duration of all the other layers to match the image sequence. The image sequence is like about 17.19 seconds. So it's important that I make sure that all the remaining layers match that time. What I'll do is I'm going to take this arrow, then I'm going to drag it all the way to the left, and I'm going to repeat that process for the other layers as well. After making this adjustment, the next thing that I want to do is I want to change the composite shot duration to match the image sequence at 17.19 seconds. To do that, I will go and click the Properties tab, which is this one right here. Then I'm going to change it. And you'll notice right away, everything is going to be compressed back to the time that I truly wanted in my composite shot. It's important to do this at this stage before you move it to the editor because we want to simplify the editing process. Remember, the main purpose of the editor is to just arrange clips. You want to minimize the editing as much as you can, if it's possible. That's just my personal take on it, but you can choose whatever meets your preferences. After making the adjustments, it's now time for me to switch back to the editor workspace. Towards the left of the media bin, you'll see the composite shot. You'll need to drag it to the timeline. And then this is the fun part. We'll actually get to play and see what we've done so far. As I press play, you'll see that the camera is indeed zooming in towards Winnie the Pooh. And if you take a look at the background, it has the color balance and vignette effect that we applied to this animation. Now we can finally export the video. The first step that you have to do is you want to go to the top of this timeline. You'll need to right click on it. You'll get three options, scroll to play ahead, set to contents and set to view. I'll need you to press set to contents. Now what this will do is it'll change the blue bar to match this composite shot duration. It's important to do this because this is how you can be able to tell HitFilm Express that I only want you to export this segment of the video so that way it doesn't export a whole bunch of other space that you don't need. That's just a way that HitFilm Express works whenever it comes to exporting. It's a little bit weird, but you'll get used to it as you start using the program a lot more often. Next step is we're going to export this video. To do this, we're going to go and click the export button and we're just going to save it as an MP4 file and name it as Poo Animation Train. As soon as I do this, you'll notice that in the export tab, it's going to First, take a look at the file and render it as an MP4 file. It takes a few minutes for it to get done. Now that it's complete, let's see the final result. Now, another way of exporting your video is you can create your own custom sizes, which is pretty awesome. For example, if I wanted to share this video on Instagram, I can be able to adjust the frame size to fit my preferences. Remember, in the beginning, we started this off as a 1920 by 1080p video. But the good thing with HitFilm Express is you can be able to adjust the dimensions to fit your preferences and it's going to do a very good job of adjusting it so it works. So for example, if you wanted to showcase your video on Instagram, it needs to be in that square ratio. You can easily be able to adjust it while still maintaining all the work that you've done. You wouldn't have to redo everything all over again. Now to begin that process, we're going to click the editor property tab, which is this 
icon right here. And currently it's set to 1920 by 1080, which is HD. But in this scenario, let's just say I wanted to change it to 1920 by 1920. As soon as I do that, it's smart enough to resize it so it can contain the whole entire image. But you'll notice that there's going to be some black bars at the top and at the bottom. Now, if I wanted to export this video for Instagram, I'm going to follow this procedure. First step is to go to where you see the export tab, then click presets. Now, if you look at the right side, if you click new preset, that allows you to create your own custom preset, which is perfect for this scenario because we want a custom preset for our animation so we can be able to promote it on Instagram. You're going to go to new preset. You're going to choose the MP4 file because that's the best file to use whenever you're uploading any video to any social media site, whether it's YouTube, Pinterest, Instagram, MP4 is always the best option. So we're going to click that. Then we're going to change it to Instagram 1920 by 1920 HD. Now for the dimensions, I want to make sure that I unlink that custom setting. So that way I can create my own custom dimensions. I'm going to unlink that and I'm going to change that to 1920. Make sure that I set that to 24 frames per second. And then once I've done that, I'm going to click OK. Now to check out your presets, what you'll need to do is to scroll down at the bottom of the screen. And there you go. We have the 1920 by 1920 HD. Now we're ready to export this animation. We're going to go to where we have export. We're going to click add to queue. And then we're going to click contents. Now you might be wondering why I clicked add to queue. This is a, a good option to use because sometimes I've noticed that when I'm using HitFilm Express, it tends to default to YouTube HD, which is fine. But in this scenario, we wanted it to have our own custom presets. So by choosing the add to queue button, it gives you an opportunity to switch the export settings for your video. Now in this case, we're gonna click this part right here. Then we're gonna scroll down until we see 1920, 1920 HD, which is my personal custom setting. Once that's done, then I can click start exporting and then it'll just take a few minutes for it to export. And now it is done. Let's check out what we've done so far. And that's pretty much it when it comes to exporting your video using HitFilm Express. Now this pretty much wraps up the episode. In this episode, I showed you how to export your image sequence from any animation program. And now you've learned how to properly edit your animated film using HitFilm Express. We went over the camera movement and color grading in this episode. And I honestly think that this should be something that every animator should learn how to use in order to enhance the look of the animated film. Now, in my biased opinion, I think that this has definitely been a much better option for a video editing software for animators than what I previously recommended, which was OpenShot. I'd like to get your opinions on that in the comment box below. Do you think that HitFilm Express is the best free video editing software for animators? Let me know in the comment box below. And if you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate it if you press the like button and share it with your friends, because this will allow the channel to grow and I'd truly appreciate that. Thanks for watching the video and I can't wait to see you on the next one. Peace.